Well, hello, boys and girls. Here we are when we feel like the clock. And this is Be Pal Picks. I'm Pal, Pearls of Wisdom. This is Boric, the B. That's how we get Be Pal, because we're clever like that. And uh, we're starting a new thing altogether. Something we've been kind of thinking about doing for a long time. Um, every day now, we're going to give picks to the whole land, YouTube, everybody. And uh, within those picks, you're going to have some overs and unders, some leans and all of those sort of things like that. And then we're going to have a couple picks that are we won't be able to give to our YouTube subscribers, but we will be giving to our Patreon people because they have confidence enough to give us a little bit of money each month for our picks. So seems only fair. But we will be giving free picks out there for your YouTube fans because we love YouTube. And uh, we think that uh, everybody should get this fine fare that we're providing. So we're going to go with it picks here in this particular video um looking at all the games for today giving our leans giving our uh some some free picks out there for you um and we are going to start with the first game today uh pirates and the reds at 2 10 p.m i think that's pacific time for me so that'd be 4 10 10 4, 4 10, 10 yeah. your time uh what do you think about this game, uh, Joe? Um, well, that game has a guy who, uh, in Ponce, uh, who's been a journeyman in the minors and then came up at 26 and has pitched good in 13 innings so far in his career. And then you have uh, Bauer, who, of course, I mean, you don't get the nickname Bauer outage for nothing. Uh, so uh, he's a very... um. Solid pitcher, also a very fun guy to follow. So if you don't do that, you might want to follow him on Twitter. A uh, very interesting human being, Trevor Bauer, uh, and um, good guy in my opinion. Because he, his opinions are very strong, but they're very right most of the time. <laughs> but anyway, uh, he's a four and three with a fifty-one point two innings pitched, a one point seven four. ERA and a point seven nine WHIP with seventy-one Ks and only thirteen walks uh so yeah bowers kind of been controlling his own thing he had one bad start recently which wasn't even that bad he gave up three so for him giving up three <laughs> is a bad start right now so i would say the lean on that would have to almost just by default be your um under by a slight lean just because Ponce has pitched well it's just will that continue as a guy that's really worked hard to get to the majors, but also it's not like he's supposed to be a solid maybe four or five starter who's now pitching more like a three. So will he continue to pitch like a three? That's the question why that would just be a slight lean rather than, uh, yeah, you should put that in because Ponce, you would think eventually has to pitch more like where you think his level is a four or fifth starter, which usually has about – a higher three to a four something ERA is a little bit more inconsistent, but gets you innings where, where since he's been up, he's other than walking a few people and then getting out of it has been pretty good. He only usually gives up about a hit per inning um, where against the Reds team too, that you think in the final month of the season, uh, they're, they're now 21 and 26, but they're going to want to build on, things they are even in their last 10 to try to go into next year because they've been pretty disappointing uh, I would think they're going to take advantage of the Pirates so um, I would lean the under because I think Bauer's going to take advantage of the Pirates it's not like they've been hitting and then I believe that Ponce will pitch okay because the Reds have not been as successful in offense as you would have hoped as a Reds fan all season. They're pretty inconsistent. They have a solid offense numbers-wise, at but in terms of actually showing it day in, day out, and doing all that stuff, uh, they're pretty inconsistent. And then lately they have a solid offense numbers-wise. Overall, they're like 28th in the league. But recently, there's been games that they've been scoring up were like 6 to 11. So you have to see if that even stays the case because they're 28th in the league. So that's why I would say that has a chance to be an under. You have the 29th offense against the 28th offense with a guy that's a good pitcher and a guy that's pitching above where people thought he would be pitching. So. 
Yeah, I mean, if I'm going to bet the total here, under seems like the play for sure. I would, if you want to throw some, if you want to throw the Reds in a parlay because you're not getting much juice on that, probably not a bad idea either. I mean, he is. They do. They are throwing out the better pitcher. Uh, do have better hitting than the Pirates. The Pirates just overall this year have been pretty poopy, although they have played <laughs> a little better as of late. Yeah. But uh, I would probably throw the Reds in there for an ML as well. All right, that's great, uh, awesome, man. So let's move over to uh, something a little closer to your heart. We're going Phillies and Marlins. Pretty interesting game, interesting pitching, ma- pitching matchup. Going to be kind of a tough play, wouldn't you say? Yeah. Um, that's a matchup that obviously you would probably lean over on. I mean, Lopez is three and four, the four fifty. Vince hasn't uh, got a win or a loss yet, but has a five point eight five ERA in Velasquez. So he came out and looked better in his last start. But normally, when he looks really good, that's when everybody gets high hopes for him, and then he comes out and throws a dud. So the uh, likelihood is that'll probably happen again, and it'll just be the same old Vince. <laughs> but that's why that could definitely lean to the over. It's just the over's high, so I don't like necessarily telling people an over's going to come in at, depending what you look at, eight and a half or nine runs, because that's high for if Lopez, who in his career, uh, let me check it, I believe has a um, career three, uh, no, no, he actually does have a career. Never mind. I was th- he does have. I was thinking of one of their other pitchers. So he does have a career for something ERA. So yeah, you probably could actually lean pretty decently into that over because Vinny Velo, I know for a fact, has a career for something ERA. Actually, believe it or not, they have the same career ERA. <laughs> Lopez and Vince Velasquez both have a four point seven one. That's kind of odd. <laughs> both have a four point seven one career ERA. So talk about two consistent, uh, consistently meh pitchers uh, pitching against each other. <laughs> that would yeah. be the definition of uh, that. Two guys that have a career uh, 4.71, except for Lopez is still a guy that people have more confidence in, can kind of bounce it out. He's a 24-year-old kid that's shown signs, or Velasquez has had so many chances time and time again. So I would say you can definitely lean the over in that one. Now, in terms of if you want to parlay something, I still thought, like I originally came in, the Phillies would win three out of these seven games, and they've only won two so far. So even through injuries, especially facing a guy that sometimes leaves the ball in your happy zone, I still think the Phillies, and for some reason when Velasquez is on the mound, uh, at times, like I've been at games, they usually sometimes they score like four and up. I still find that they'll probably be the team that finds a way to win. So that's also a, I would lean towards the Phillies because you get some good, you get you get some solid juice with that lean because the Marlins are favored in most books right now. So if not all, so. yeah, I got I got the Marlins as a favorite here. I also um, I also don't mind that lean at all. Uh, uh, because, like you said, the juice. It's probably a coin flip game. So if you're going to bet on a coin flip game, you might as well take the juice, right? Yeah. Uh, okay. That's kind of the way I look at it. Plus the Phillies, when they decide to hit, they hit, right? So it's almost like either they do or they don't. And uh, when they do, they usually do a lot. So the over is not a bad play at all. Um, what do we got next? We got... Uh, the next one I think would be Oakland and Seattle. Oakland and Seattle, yeah. yeah. What 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 are, you, what are you liking for Oakland and Seattle? Um, well, in the in the first game they got Luzardo against Gonzalez. Um, I would lean because you have two good pitchers there. This one was a tough lean. They're just struggling a bit. Uh, the Lazardo's ERA went up because of like one start, so he still has 45 strikeouts to 14 ball or walks. And uh, Gonzalez is striking out people ridiculously, she has 46 to four. Um, so I would still have to lean 
on that game as a lower run total probably because the only team I see jumping, it's not like the Mariners have a good freaking offense. They're 23rd in the league. So the only team I see jumping, and they traded people that actually were a big part of their offense because they were kind of moving on and trying to get some other guys back. That So I would say the – I would definitely lean – I would lean the over in that game, honestly, I would still say, just because you're facing a lefty, even though he's one of the better lefties, if I think someone's going to figure out a way to mash a good lefty, I would give that crown to the A's, even without Matt Chapman for the rest of the season. Then uh, the Seattle Mariners, who are just doing solid recently, but are still not that good of a baseball team. They still have things they need to figure out to become the team they truly want to be. Uh, I mean, the team's 7-3 and three in their last 10 games, and they have a minus 36 run differential on the season. I mean, eventually a minus 36 run differential has to catch up to you. You're not just going to keep being half decent when having your t- – like, they're only four games below 500. They should really probably be seven games below 500. Because if you have a minus 36 run differential – you shouldn't even be winning 21 games. <laughs> so they're they're winning in spite of how they're playing. They just keep finding out a way to somehow win a game. And that's going to catch up to you, especially when you're playing one of the best teams in the league. So I would lean the over there because I think the A's might be able to give Gonzalez his first bad start of the season. And then uh, I would also lean in that case to the athletics, obviously. So I got um, I see what you're saying. I find in the Seattle, the reason why they have the differential is when they lose, they generally get spanked. And then yeah, when, they, when, they, when they win, it's usually pretty a close game. Right. So, um, yeah, I could but see the, lead with the sign of a team that's a couple years away. Whenever you lose and you get spanked and you win and you stay in games, that just is a sign that you have good coaching that keeps you kind of in line and even keeled, but you still are a couple years away from your players or at least a year being fully ready to stay consistent. Because they have Kyle Lewis, who's been consistent as hell. He's one of the best players in baseball this year. And then Seager's bounced back and had a great year. Even putting those two in hasn't made them have a consistent season. And then Gonzalez is pitching amazing, still hasn't made them have a consistent season. So it's kind of... There's something in the water of Seattle. They just need to figure out how to get over that hump. And that's, that's also the only team in baseball that's never made the fall classic. Not never won it. Never made the World Series. Right. So the, they're coming to a headwind of being able to do that soon. It's just not this year. <laughs> okay. Um, also on that, I will say that I kind of – uh, my play on this, if I'm going to make a play, honestly, just because of the juice and the fact that Gonzalez can pitch, I, I wouldn't, I don't think it'd be a horrible play to go Seattle Mariners first five. Um, the, you're, because of the juice you're getting on that play, there's, uh, I think there could be a 50 50 that they could win the first five. That's I true. doubt they, I doubt they win the game though. So I don't, I like, I like, yeah. I like, Oakland for the for, for the ML on now, the whole game. Since this is a double header, instead of going in order of the game times, we should just talk about the second game. I think that would make more. If you sense. wish to do that, do we have a play on the second game? Well, no, no, okay. no, no. I was going to say the second game right now only has Mike Miner, who's been struggling on the year, uh, slated to start. Um, he. He has only pitched. He hasn't really pitched much in Oakland yet. But I mean, the, he's a guy that they acquired at the deadline. He's been struggling this year after having a great year last year. And then the Mariners haven't announced who's going to pitch in Game Two yet. So obviously, what I will say is, if that goes into a bullpen game for the M's, I would definitely lean over. If they put some young kid that's actually a pretty darn good pitcher in there for game two, 
then that likely isn't the case. But if they just go, okay, we don't want to use all of it. We don't want to throw somebody on shorter rest, or we don't want to throw this kid into maybe a bad situation. Then I would definitely lean over on that because minor has been very off this year and the Seattle bullpen is nothing special. So if they run a bullpen game against the A's, that could be a very high scoring game with how uh, minor has been off this year. And, with the Seattle Mariners pitching being inconsistent uh, in the bullpen. that And they also traded a couple of the bullpen pieces, obviously, in different deals. So that would be definitely a lean to an over, as long as the Mariners don't pitch one of their stud young kids in game two and they pitch, they go to a bullpen game or pitch somebody that's just an average journeyman starter that they have on their taxi squad. Like, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, honestly, the my uh, my gambling site doesn't even have that game up right now, which is weird. Uh, bet three six five. Um, so I'm going to go with you on that. Uh, the, the the over on that one from what you've said, I honestly didn't study it enough before we started in here, but that does make a heck of a lot of sense. We didn't have that as a as a play for our Patreons, but the next game, uh, well, Cardinals versus Brewers. Um, we do have a play on the total here, so we will kind of avoid the total. Uh, that's a that that's being sent out to people that have already paid for the pick. If you want to go find that, you can find that on. Uh, patreon app you can find us there where we're have our uh what are we 10 and 2 in our last two days in ball picks uh we're hitting like crazy so people are making money over there you can get some good leans and help your betting uh however you bet as well uh, but we will we do have um uh, we, 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 we this was the uh, cardinals versus Cardinals over Braves first game. Okay, we do. Sorry, we don't have the total. We do have the uh, match. So um, we won't talk about the uh, side, but we will talk about the total. I got that wrong. Uh, Cardinals over Braves. Do you have anything on the total on that game? Or- um, I mean, you got a very good uh, young pitcher on the Cardinals. Uh, For Brewers, I should say, not Braves. Yeah, you got a very solid guy in uh, Kim, and he's pitching very good since coming over. He's not a young pitcher, a young pitcher in terms of major league experience because uh, he pitched it overseas until he was in his 30s. But uh, he's pitching really well this year. This is his uh, – Best season. Uh, he also, like you said, has a save. He's kind of been like a, j- a jack of all trades type guy for the Cardinals. So um, it's six and a half. Is it six and a half? I yeah. would say, with that logic, I would say lean the over because you got Limblum on the other side. So he might give up four or five himself. And then if he gives up one run, or the Cardinals bullpen, because I don't think he's pitching a complete game. He hasn't started all the time. So, or the Cardinals bullpen gives up one or two runs, then that would do it for you, too. So, he usually pitches about five to six innings at most. Yeah. So, uh, I would say definitely lean over there. Yeah, I like the over there, too. Uh, actually, that's a really good free pick for you guys, because the more I think about it, the more I think I should have probably gave that to our Patreon members and probably will. I, I do like the over there, because, like you said, Kim probably isn't going to play deep, right? So uh, there's a good chance that there could be a good over play there. Um, now we go to uh, the second game of Pirates versus Reds. And uh, we have a play on the total here. So let's go just on the side for Pirates versus Reds second game. Where, what would your lean be there, my friend? Um, uh, you mean for, like, who's going to win? Yeah, who game? would win? Yeah. Well, I would say, I mean, the Reds are disappointing, but the Pirates are just not good. Um, so yeah, I would lean towards Cincinnati, even with D. Scalfani. I mean, unless of it, because the thing is, David Bell's probably just going to take out D. Scalfani if he stinks, 
and then put in someone else. And then you go from there because Mitch Keller is going to have to pitch really well because the Pirates don't really score. So, like, you figure, you like, D. Scalfani also, this could be a game that gets him going a bit because the Pirates are 29th in the league in offense. So, I mean, if they just can't score, then – I don't know if it matters how much who pitches against them because the dude normally has done pretty good in his career. This year, he just so happens to really be off for whatever reason. Uh, so, uh, I mean, the guy usually is a very quality fourth or fifth starter. He has a career 4.25 and tends to eat a lot of innings for you. You would think against the Pirates, he probably could do so. So I would I would still lean the the Reds. Now, he might give up four. But he'll probably eat innings, and then you would have to make sure Keller can pitch deep in the game because it's not like the Pirates have a bullpen. So if Keller doesn't pitch very deep into the game, then you're going to still have a little bit of issues there. I mean, the Pirates ERA is also 23rd in the league at a 5.08 as a team ERA. So, yeah, I don't think they have too much of a chance. Yeah, it's the pop kind of pop gun uh, offense of the Pirates, which has been better as of late, but nothing that makes you want to go, yeah, the Pirates, you know, that's it's really what their Achilles heel is more than anything on, on that team, although everything is not great, but that would be probably the worst. So, uh, yeah, I got to go with you on that. Um, next, we have, um, we're going to go for the side on uh, the Braves versus Orioles because we have a play for our Patreon members on the total. So Braves, Orioles, what do you got on that? Well, um, Tucson's very inconsistent. Granted, it's not like Lopez is. Jorge Lopez is the epitome of consistency whatsoever either. So um, if you want to make some money, I would lean Baltimore, but I wouldn't put a hell of a lot into it. Right. That's pretty much what I would say as well. Yeah. I wouldn't, it's not really a play I'd be looking at as far as not much juice on the Braves. Uh, two pitching matchups that could go either way. Don't really like betting those kind of games, but if you're gonna, if I'm going to go with something, you might as well go with the Orioles for the juice because, again, this could be a, like a, almost a 50-50 play, so you might as well go with the juice. I tend to like to go that way if I'm going to go that way. Uh, so we our next, uh, we, the next one would be the total for Twins White Sox, if you have any play on that at all, which is nine. Yeah. The lean with that one would be more under because Cease has been very good this year and Barrios has been off in four of his last seven, but he's also a ace caliber pitcher. Uh, and he's still even being off as a 440 ERA. So that's still not bad for having a few off starts in a span of seven games. That means you were pitching fairly solid beforehand, especially in a shortened season because your ERA would skyrocket in a shortened season. Um, so. I would still lean under on that one just due to the fact of Cease has been pitching amazing and Barrios is probably going to at most give up four runs. And if Dylan Cease keeps pitching like he's been pitching, he'll only give up at most two. And those teams do have good bullpens, unlike other teams we talked about. So... I would say that has a lean to be under. Yeah, I would have to agree with you there as well. If I was going to put any bet on it, that's likely. Um, so we have the second game, which we probably should have did already, but that's all right. Uh, the Cardinals versus Brewers with um, – who do we got starting there? Corbin Burns is the uh, Brewers who's been very good, and then – uh, Ponce de Leon, who's been very bad, <laughs> is starting for That's the was, yeah. uh, Cardinals. Uh, the dude has 15 walks to 21 strikeouts. Um, I would definitely pick if we that that would be a good first five again. 
at least, because I don't know how confident I am in the Brewers uh, holding on to a lead. But in the first five, they definitely could be winning that game, and they really should be, uh, with um, Burns to uh, Ponce de Leon. I like that play. It's a good play. It's a good thing we bounce things off each other here because I uh, start to see plays I wasn't really looking at before we got started. Final game of the night. Uh, Going to be one I want to watch. Should be very interesting. Two opposing styles uh, and uh, um, great bullpen. Dodgers versus Padres. What do you like in that game at all, if anything? Well, I would say the under for sure, because you got Dennis and Lament against Clayton Kershaw, and both have been pretty lights out. So I would definitely say the under in terms of who the hell's going to win the game. <laughs> That's a crapshoot. <laughs> That's yeah. two teams in the West that are playing like world beaters. And the Padres are going to be probably playing. The, the, the Padres are a team that was supposed to be very solid and built on last year. But they were not supposed to be right behind the Dodgers. Like nobody expected them to be right there with a team that everybody thought was one of the best teams assembled in about the last thirty years or so uh, in the Dodgers. So mm -hmm. that's why they're still kind of, even though they're one of the best teams playing with house money, because nobody expected them to be this good. People expected them to be good, but they didn't expect them to be a top World Series contender per se already. That's by far one of the best teams in the league. I don't think people expected that yet because that also spells danger to every other team because they have more people coming up the banks. So I would say if you're leaning anything at all, I guess you would have to lean very, very, and this is very slightly to the Dodgers because Kershaw's pitching like he was back about five or six years ago right now uh, with that. And uh, he's still been very great in every other year, but he showed a little bit of wear and tear in the last two seasons of his career, where this year he has shown nothing. And he looks like the old Clayton Kershaw fully and everywhere again. So that would be a very, very, very small lean though. Yeah, it's kind of hard to go against Kershaw just about against just about anybody. Um, I don't, However, yeah, Lament has to go deeper into games because uh, unless because I don't think Kersh missed a start. Uh, Kershaw played in seven games. Uh, Nelson played in no, oh, no, he must have missed a couple starts because Nelson played in nine games. Um, but it, it's um. It's going to be interesting because Lamette's only issue has been control in his career, and this year he only has 15 walks and 68 strikeouts and a .92. Both of these guys have under a hits per inning walks and hits per innings pitch. So it's definitely likely going to be a pitcher's game, at least until both of these guys come out of it. And then both of these teams have good bullpen, so it's likely going to be That's a pitcher's game. That's what I was going to say. Yeah, yeah. Bullpen is also so, on both teams, so... Yeah, I would say you definitely under is a good thing here at first. Uh, and then I wouldn't even do it, but I mean a slight lean to the Dodgers, but I wouldn't even play, try to mess I'd with probably them. Fade the, I'd probably fade the side as well. Um, uh, even if you do take the Dodgers, uh, you're not getting huge juice for no. that type of a play. So uh, under would be the pick. Anybody can find our great – our, our, our most, uh, our great leans, our best leans, I guess I should say, our best picks of the day over at our Patreon, uh, Be Pal Picks on Patreon, uh, making lots of money over there. I hope you've enjoyed this fine program. And let us know in the comment section what you think, what your plays are. Give us some parlays down there. I was thinking about maybe doing a parlay challenge. We're going to be doing football. We're going to be doing basketball. We're going to be doing hockey. We're going to be doing everything here at Be Pal Picks. So, Keep on the edge of your seat. And don't forget, Steel Flyers, www.steelflyers.com, where you can find all of our work there right now. But this website's going to be upgraded in a way that's going to blow your mind. That's our full 42, boys and girls. Thank you for coming and listening to us today. Have a great day. Lots of love to you.